How's it going? My name is Alan Hackler from Bay Maples Wild California Gardens. We're here in Palo Alto, California, and we are going to be installing a whole house gray water system. And we're going to be putting in this tank, which is a pump and filter system made by Water Renew. And we're going to show you how we do it. So I often get calls and emails asking about wanting to see a gray water system and how it all works and how it goes together. And one of the challenges is once the project is done, everything is buried under the house. And it's very hard to showcase what's going on and how it all goes together. So the point of this video is to kind of really show you the process as we're doing it so you can kind of make sense of it, see how it all works, see why we do it and where things go. So kind of follow along as you put the pieces together and make the system come to life. So I'm standing next to the Water Renew Gray system that we're going to be installing. And all of the parts in the system more or less happen right here in this container. It has our surge tank, our pump, our filter, all of our electronics and control mechanisms, all in this one tidy package. That's why I'm a big fan of this particular system. Here's our three inch inlet pipe. And this is taking in water from the bathroom shower, sinks, and laundry machine. From there, it flows inside of the tank. We have a pump and float switch and a filter. So as the water enters, it's gonna activate the, the pump, which will send it through a filter and then out into the landscape. There's also some initial sensors and controllers that are all housed in here. Whenever there is insufficient gray water at any given time to meet the landscape needs, we have this potable makeup water which will take water from the municipal supply and help feed the irrigation system. And this is a little air gap right here to make sure there's no cross-contamination with the gray water and the potable supply. On the far side, this is our sewer connection. So if the pump ever fails, the water can flow the sewer. It's also connected to our filter uh, bypass or th the flush. So whenever the filter is cleaning itself, it'll send that dirty water back out to the sewer and this will connect to our existing sewer connection. One of my favorite things about this system is once the cover is on, you can't see any of this. It's all housed in one nice, tidy unit, making it very simple to find a location for it. It doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, easy to get to everything. You can just lift this up and access all the important parts. Really a nice all-in-one design. One of the questions that I often get is, are you able to store gray water? And the answer is no, for a variety of reasons. One, that water gets quite disgusting very quickly if, if you're storing it. So try to keep it in the tank the least amount of time possible. Secondly, the demand on your landscape is usually much higher than the supply side for your gray water. So it's really not offering any benefit to store the water. Basically, this system is designed to Take the water as soon as it's being produced from a shower or sink or laundry load, filter that water and more or less send out the landscape immediately. So this is not a storage tank, it is a surge tank. So I just installed this three-way valve. This diverts the gray water either into our tank or into the main sewage line. So uh, we will eventually put an actuator on here so they can just flip the switch and switch it back and forth. Um, so right now it's going straight into sewage because we don't have the rest of this hooked up. Uh, he's putting in the gray water tank. We're getting ready for it right now. Uh, so right now it's just going straight to sewer. And turn this valve. There you go. The actuator is just this little mechanical box um, that wires up to a switch. Uh, I believe we're putting it in the laundry room. Then I'll just flip the switch, uh, electronically control this valve, so you don't have to come down here and do it yourself like this. So we have our uh, sink and shower for one of the hallway bathrooms right there. And then just beyond that is our laundry and then the jacuzzi tub for the master. We go further down, we have another sink and shower hookup. Uh, and that's coming into our first line, and it starts at the hallway half bath. And it's picking up the bathroom sink there. And then it comes in here, and we capped all the spots where it was originally going just straight to sewage. And I brought that in. 
and then all the way to here. We just took our own line, ran it straight alongside the original sewage, and then we just chopped the connections where we had uh, uh, gray water coming out. That's where it ties back into the sewage if they want to divert it. Otherwise, it goes out the, uh, the perimeter wall and into the gray water tank. So the reason why we have this is by filtering the water, it allows you to have a lot more options in terms of how the water gets used. Most traditional drip irrigation systems will get clogged by the gray water. So this allows you to filter the water, send it through a traditional style of drip line that you could then incorporate in a variety of different ways. And also by having the pump allows you to pump it to the front yard, we're also gonna use it for the backyard. So a much larger variety of uses for the water. Woo! Right on. So we're very close now. Um, we've got a pipe coming out of the wall. This is all of the showers, the laundry, all coming into this three inch pipe. We're going to cut this and we'll just put a simple rubber coupling on this. We're gonna cut into this sewer pipe right here. This is the main sewer pipe for the whole house and this will be our overflow. So if for whatever reason, if there's too much gray water being generated, something happens to the pump, it'll still just be a pass through to the sewer. This is our makeup water valve. We're gonna come right off of this hose bib right here. We'll come down and come into this valve. It's going to be hooked to our controller and it will pop on when necessary. If the homeowners aren't home, uh, they go on vacation or something, um, there still will be water that's being going into the unit so that we can continue to irrigate. They don't have to worry about inviting people over to take showers so that their gray water unit is still working. We're not taking the kitchen sink, so there's kind of a debate still going on. In several states, they allow you to take the kitchen sink water and the dishwasher water. California feels that there's too much biology in it and that it's going to attract critters and whatnot. And so for that reason, it's still out there. They have a jacuzzi in the master bathroom. They have a shower. There are two other bathrooms with showers and we're taking the washing machine. And the only thing that's really required is that, you know, there are environmentally friendly soaps, shaving creams, toothpaste, etc., that are easy to come by. And it's just pretty necessary that you continue to use those, especially in your washing machine, because there is so much water there that um, if you're using like a um, detergent that's not a liquid, there tends to be a lot of sodium in it, a powder, and um, that sodium over time will build up in your soil and your soil will be plant friendly. <laughs> this, put it right in here. One of my recommendations I give to people is the best time to do a whole house gray water system is during a new construction or a major remodel. And the reason why is during a major remodel or new construction, everything's already exposed. There's no landscape to work around. There's already plumbing work that's happening. They're already pulling permits, so you can really piggyback a lot of the work and a lot of the things happening on site. This is a new construction home in Palo Alto, which is the perfect opportunity to do this system because they're just putting in the plumbing, just doing the final hardscape in front of the house, so the timing couldn't be better. The filter itself is an auto flush filter, so ideally the homeowner should almost never have to touch the system. Maybe every so often the filter will need to be cleaned. That should be done by a professional, but that can be done maybe as infrequent as once a year to every couple years. So it's a very hands-free. Ideally the homeowner should have to interact as very little. Basically the most interaction they're gonna have is gonna be via their smartphone 
and be able to plug in some of the updates for irrigation usage when they want to schedule things, but they should never have to get inside the tank and do any work. So this is a backflow preventer. If water is coming from our unit, from the overflow, it can come and push up this and flow into the sewer. But if the sewer backs up, this piece will not allow anything to go, so we won't have sewage going into our unit ever. That's just a little protective measure we put on so that the client's investment never gets damaged. This is a little transition piece so I can get back to PVC. It's got little plastic teeth inside. going to be one of the valves that will be going to the front yard here. This is going to be controlling some of the water coming from the gray water system into the landscape. This valve will probably control one section of the yard, for example, maybe the parking strip or the right side of it. We're going to be doing three in the front yard and uh, four valves in the backyard. This is actually a little more of a sealant versus cement actually. This is just ensuring that we're going to have zero leaks at this point of contact between the PVC and the valve. This allows you to hook up to a smart controller that can set different zones for different irrigations. So whether it's from every day, once a week, this can also connect to a potable system. So let's say you have a certain zone, let's say you have some raised vegetable beds or some delicate plants that you don't want to use for gray water. This can also take water from the potable side and irrigate certain zones on just potable. Or let's say there's no gray water available, it'll pull fresh water. So this configuration offers lots of different benefits. You can even plumb a rain water system. So if you have a water cistern, it'll also pull water from the water cistern when it's available. So this is what they classify as like a, a smart system. So it just offers you a wide variety of configurations, water usage, scheduling options, self-filtering, all in a very compact unit. So why well, I'm a big fan of this particular system.